I'm so sick and tired of the webs they spin. Got everyone divided with the lies they spin. Have to watch always. What's up, Breakdown Gang? It's your boy JD here. I am back with another video. Y'all, we've got a lot to talk about today. We're going to be talking about the energy and the food crisis coming up this winter. Before we get into it, hit the like, hit the subscribe button, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for caring about what's going on in your world. This affects you and your kids, your family, and all that. So on my way into work today, I was listening to, I was watching a video by a guy that I watch called the prepared homestead okay and um this guy this guy has a homestead he's got a little a farm he's getting ready for what's going on and basically i wanted to show you guys part of this video and talk about it because this is affecting us so i'm going to get into this real quick and uh let's check this out um energy is not doing good uh we talked about this the other day uh, and we've actually talked about it on this channel a few times, propane uh, and propane accessories mm -hmm. in the United States. But Europe is doing really bad. Um, it's, they're, they're in all-out crisis mode. And I've even seen some mainstream or somewhat mainstream people uh, recently actually entertaining the idea that Europe or many of the European countries could completely collapse just this winter, just over the winter. We're not talking... Wow. Here. Okay, Europe could face terrible winters for a decade due to energy crisis. All right, so let's go over this real quick. What has happened in a nutshell? In a nutshell, the World Economic Forum and the UN and the powers that be have had this agenda for quite some time to make the whole world green, uh, the world is overpopulated. There are a bunch of useless eaters walking around the planet, and we have to fix that, right? Or everyone's going to die. The planet's going to blow up, right? So we see this implementation of this green energy thing, right? And um, Europe and America all went along with it. During the Obama administration, everyone went along with it, right? Doing this green energy thing. So when Trump got elected, what's one of the first things he did? He pulled out of the Paris Accord, and he said, we're going to be energy independent. We know what's going on here. We see this globalist plan, and I'm not about it. I'm not for it. Therefore, the mainstream media, which is practically another branch of the UN government now, decided that he was orange man bad, evil Nazi Hitler, and that Trump had to be destroyed because we had to get back on track with our ESG stuff. We had to get back on track with our green energy stuff. So... Trump put a little bit of a, 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 a Trump put a little bit of a halt in America towards this whole globalization, this whole green energy thing, right? But Europe kept going with it. They just rolled with it and rolled with it and rolled with it. So here we've got America is a few years behind. Um, as, soon as, as soon as Biden got into office, he what did he do? He like undid all the stuff that Trump did. He canceled the drilling contracts. He made it impossible for companies to drill. Uh, they started incorporating ESG into all of the companies. And now people can't get loans because BlackRock and Vanguard and Blackstone won't loan them any money if they're trying to drill for oil, right? Because it's not green. So anyway, fast forward to now with the war in Ukraine and Russia and the fact that we installed the government in Ukraine to begin with what was it back in 2014 we kept UN kept creeping to Russia's door all of a sudden Ukraine's at war it's a proxy war basically so the war has exacerbated the situation however we've been headed in this situation for quite some time towards this the stopping the farming the fertilizers it's giant population control eugenics anyway so that's up to speed that's where we're at that's why europe is facing all these hardships now and we're just a few maybe not even a few years behind but we're just a little bit behind so all right let's keep rolling years down the road or even months and months down the road but that this winter alone could cause europe to collapse now whoa i know most of my listeners are here in the united states there's definitely some that are abroad and in, in europe and other countries i i hear from you often and thank you for joining us, and you're welcome to be here. Uh, but for those of you American listeners, or at least, you know, Western Hemisphere, mm -hmm. uh, don't discount this and say, well, you know, made your bed, sleep in it. Yeah, that sucks, whatever. Right. We're already sending a lot of aid to Europe, 
a lot of energy aid to Europe or selling off our stuff to Europe because to try to help, you know, back them up. Including the strategic oil reserves that we're selling to China and other parts of the world from our own oil reserves that are supposed to be used for like military crisis. And if you think for one minute that if Europe collapses, if their economies collapse, if there's, you know, governments collapse, and it's not going to affect the United States, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Because it absolutely is. It's going to affect us. The most of, many of the European countries are our, some of our closest allies. Um, True. And of course, you know, most of them are part of NATO that we are. And so the, any type of uh, disturbances and instabilities in Europe, is, is, it's, there's a ripple effect, folks. It's going to affect us. Yeah, can you imagine? I mean, if, if a lot of the countries over in Europe, like Germany, France, all the countries that we do business with, basically, that we trade, sell, if they're going through it, obviously we're going to feel a lot of that over here. We are still pretty self-sufficient when it comes to some things, but mostly we're relying on those countries over there for different things. I've seen people say, well, you know, at least we're in the United States. Let Europe burn mm. um, or freeze. It's going to affect us. Uh, right now, from the reports that I'm seeing, uh, wood, firewood by the cord uh, is selling for somewhere around a thousand or more U.S. dollars or the equivalency <laughs> of what a thousand U.S. dollars is. An equivalent a thousand dollars for a quart of wood, y'all. That's that's crazy. That's really high. Um, I've seen some people here in the United States claim that that or state that that cord wood is selling, you know, anywhere from three to five hundred dollars a cord here in the United States, which is really high because around here it's still one forty, one fifty. Um, but over a thousand dollars a cord is that's pretty high. Uh, there's been lines of people lining up to try to get coal. Uh, mm. for their for their homes it's interesting let's read this on the screen it says in poland where coal is king dozens are lining up at the lubieski weigel bogdanka coal mine waiting for days and nights to stock up on heating fuel these people are getting in their cars they're driving to a coal a place where they mine coal or a coal factory of some kind like refinement factory and they're literally hoping to be able to fill their trunks up with coal so that they can heat their homes. It doesn't sound very green energy to me, does it? That um, all these green energy measures that are causing a, a lot of these crises over in Europe are forcing the people to resort back to fuels that are the dirty, things. Dirty fuel, down. right. Instead of letting them use nuclear energy or, or coal-fired uh, electric energy from from plants or even gasoline or diesel or natural gas we're back to coal and wood fire in the home well, folks you know that natural gas burns super clean right i mean it's super clean it's easy to come by if you're drilling and you're fracking the an the answers to this power stuff they're out there clean burning nuclear energy i mean look at russia they've got nuclear plants up they're they're doing fine russia's actually doing great as far as their energy goes. They're not experiencing these problems. And Putin seems to be one of the only world leaders who has the cojones to stand up to the World Economic Forum? Hmm. Um, which I'm fine with, but it's just, it's a little ironic. Uh, so we're, there's videos and there's footage of pictures and reports all over Europe where people are trying to scramble around and, and get coal uh, to, to, to you know, heat their home. Electricity has gone up about 1,800% in Europe. 1,800%. Wow. Electricity has shot up. That's insane. Uh, I know my electric bill has been creeping up. I don't know if it's because of the air conditioning or whatever, but I can. I don't think it's where it, it was last year. This is absolutely a recipe for disaster. And, and the Europe uh, weather predictions uh, for this winter look very similar to the ones here in the United States, which mm. are, it's probably going to be a really bad, harsh winter. We had a, a very dry, hot summer, um, and typically, even if nothing else is, is affecting the weather, if, if everything is just a natural cycle, which many of us know that that's probably not the case, but it, anyways, if it was a natural cycle, typically when you have... And I think what he's talking about there is the fact that the chemtrails and all that, they can control the droughts. They can control a lot more of that than what we realize, but I digress. I mean, excessively hot, dry winter, um, summer, 
you typically have a pretty harsh cold winter. I mean, it's just the way the pendulum swings. Uh, and so if, if Europe has even a normal winter, um, it's going to be bad. But if it, they have a really harsh one, you know, there could be deaths. There could be, you know, civil wow. unrest, people, yeah. you know, kind of losing it, losing their humanity like we talked about this morning in the, the walking video. Um, the United States isn't really doing a lot better. I mean, we're doing better, mm -hmm. and to, so to speak, when it comes to energy, but things aren't looking great. Uh, natural gas supplies are 12% uh, below the five-year average, the, the amount oh, wow. of natural gas that we have stored, 12% uh, below national average. I don't know because I couldn't find information if that's just due to other factors or is that due to the fact that we're shipping and selling a lot of natural gas to Europe. I yeah, well, know. it also has to do with the contracts and the fact that the companies are afraid to drill because of ESG and because of the consequences of, of all that. I mean, that's it. Well, maybe it's a little bit of both, but the fact is, is that we have less than what we would normally have. Um, Canada is the same way. Diesel supplies are also at, at just almost record lows. They, they've, hmm. we're, we're at lows that are comparison to 20, 30, and 40 years ago when it comes to our diesel reserves and uh, gasoline reserves. And of course, if, if you remember just a few days ago, one of the nation's largest oil refineries was shut down because it caught fire and burned. I did not know that. One of the nation's largest oil refiner refineries was shut down because it caught fire. Don't believe in coincidence. Um, and then, of course, uh, as we've mentioned several times, propane is is gone up, and there's a worry that there could be a shortage of propane, or at least not as much as what what people want, um, because of plants distribution plants that have, have been shut down. And then the fact that propane is is very near a, a record high before we even get into our cold season. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's definitely in that neighborhood of right around $3 a pound uh, or a gallon. And so all of this is really, really bad. Mm. And I could go on and on with stuff like this. There's all kinds of stuff. There's yeah. stuff about China and Taiwan and there's you know, stuff, of course, here in the United States, Biden and all that kind of stuff, Trump and more stuff. In I mean, he's like, I'm not even going to get into China's whole economy collapsing and them needing to take Taiwan uh, to get control of the chips because that would turn their economy around if they got a hold of all the, the chip making abilities in Taiwan. Um, and that's a whole nother thing. Europe and Russia and you know, all kinds of increased nuclear threats, you know, they're passing out uh, potassium iodide like crazy, you know, like mm. Tic Tacs over there in Ukraine because they're afraid something's going to happen. But personally, uh, what I've seen in the last few days that I think should be like front page, you know, broadcasted everywhere, and it's not, is yeah. this. The Pope has uh, issued a declaration, an order, whatever they call it, uh, that all of the Vatican's assets, the Holy See's assets, uh, that are all over the world in banks, uh, and it specifically says liquid assets, financial assets, so we're talking, you know, gold, silver, and bonds, stocks, probably cash, uh, all this kind of stuff that is being held in banks around the world, he's ordered it to be taken out of those banks, all of it, and be returned to the Vatican. And he said that this Whoa. must be done before the 30th of September. Wait a minute, so the Pope is having everything that the Vatican owns around the world brought back home to the Vatican. I wonder if he knows something that we don't. This is a little strange, okay? Yeah. Um, if we didn't know what we already know about all these other countries and all these billionaires and everyone, you know, buying gold or removing gold from vaults and, and hiding it away or whatever they're doing with it, and then what we don't, if we didn't know anything about the whole, you know, DD, which is the digital, uh, I have to use code anymore, I just happen to have a, you know, my wallet set here. Uh, the, the, the DD, the digital this, okay? That's gonna be our new code word uh, because YouTube doesn't like people talking about it. Hmm. Um, it would be weird, but since we know those things, um, my gut initial reaction is is that this is very potentially due to that. It could be a, a culmination of they know that markets, the economies of uh, yeah. the West is gonna, are gonna collapse. Maybe it's Europe and these other economies are going to collapse or because of the DD, the digital this. 
Okay, so I'm just going to stop it right there. Um, now, basically, I don't know if you've ever heard of BRICS. BRICS is a new organization, fairly new organization, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. And they are currently working on a new system of currency that the world can use instead of the U.S. dollar. And when you've got countries and rich individuals and organizations pulling their gold and their money out of banks and out of the depositories around the country, um, and they're, they're recalling it and they're doing something else with it, that is a red flag. The people, the powers that be know something about the American currency that we do not know yet. And that is scary, my friends. So guys, what can we do? What can those of us who don't make a lot of money do to try to prepare for this whole energy thing? Well, let's talk about some practical things, right? If you live in a house like I live in, there are little tiny things you can do to make it more airtight, make it a little bit more insulated as far as in the wintertime putting plastic over the windows. I know it looks tacky, but it works, guys. It keeps the heat in. Um, if there's any way that you can get a hold of a wood stove, cut a little hole in the side of your house and burn some wood, if you can get a hold of it, if that's easier. Um, other than that, get ready to dress warm this winter. I mean, you can always wear hoodies and sweatpants and all that kind of stuff. I know it doesn't sound good, but you know, hopefully we don't experience what they're going to over in Europe. Um, but guys, there's just, you got to start thinking about it now. You got to start thinking about your food situation, your water situation, your heat situation, your vehicle situation. You got to start thinking about it now. Um, it's really hard when you don't make a lot of money. Trust me, I know. But um, I've got, I've got under my bed, I've got my food storage going. I've got my water filtration system going. I watch a lot of info war. I, I, I get the news. I, I, I know what's going on. So guys, just try to prepare as much as possible.